So this is what I'm working on, trying to get some clearance. I've got the uh, rear caliper flipped upside down so I can do this with the uh, emergency brakes, get them out of the way, don't want them hanging down. Um, but it makes it for a pretty tight curve here on the uh, rear brake cable. And I've formed these hard lines going to an intersection here and then boom. So on the other side, I stopped the line back here. So this has a harder bend to it. And it wasn't too much work for me to get it so that this didn't hit the inside of the um, rim of the 14 inch snowflakes. Um, so what I'm going to do with this one is use my Master Cool hydraulic flaring tool, which is awesome. Then I'm going to just cut this back, put a new bubble flare on it, reconnect it, and then flush the line. So, got to do it. Well, there's nothing like cutting a brake line when the system's full of fluid. It just spills out everywhere and you're trying to make a fitting. <laughs> Well, it's oozing out all over you and the tools and anyway, I've cleaned it up and I've got it uh, routed nice and tight now so it should be good. And I've bled it, flipped the rotor upside down, bled it, pumped the brake really hard, it's not leaking so I think I got it. Sorry, things are a little messy in here right now but uh, I had to replace this line from the master cylinder to the proportioning valve. Uh, I uh, tried several times to reseat the inverted flare, the 45 degree inverted flare uh, on the Willwood valve that's American fittings, right? So the American 45 old school inverted flare could, just kept leaking just a little bit but introducing air into the system and giving me grief. Every All the bubble, metric bubble fittings, perfect. That one, all the other inverted flares are fine. That one, uh, I think it's because I originally, when I tried to seat it, it was at a bit of an angle and I wasn't careful. And no matter what I did, I had to bend a new line, made it a little longer, took a little bit of the tension out of it. And uh, it's, it's in there solid now. So what I've hooked up, just temporarily, so I've hooked up the uh, vacuum uh, pump and I've got, I'm just stealing a gauge from my brake bleeding line here, it's just convenient, because um, I just finished re-bleeding all the brakes and getting the pedal nice and firm uh, now that I've got the new line in. And so I've got new fluids run to every corner of the car and it's feeling good on the pedal. What I'm gonna show you now is how I can vary, uh, where is it? It's around here somewhere, yeah, this, this device here is a vacuum pressure switch, it's adjustable. Stick a little Allen key in uh, in the in the uh, opening entrance here, vacuum sensing entrance, and you just turn the key and you can adjust it up and down. So it's currently set at 20 um, inches of mercury of vacuum. So it'll suck, suck, suck until it gets 20 inches of mercury, and then it'll shut off, um, uh, shut off the pump until it needs to recharge. So I'll just I'll plug it all in and I'll show you how it works. But basically. You know, the deal is, without any vacuum, this pedal is, is hard to push. It's, you know, full manual effort, and uh, it feels accordingly like, you know, you don't want to drive a car like this too much. You're pretty tired of it. So, I'm going to go and set it at 20 and show you how soft it is, and then we'll turn it down, and you can see how I can adjust the pedal pressure and how much force is required by just turning that uh, Allen key. Okay, I'm gonna just turn on the uh, ignition and get the pump started. So you can hear it. And there's the vacuum gauge, it's moving up. So, and it shuts off at 20. And I have a little bit of a leak in the system just because my fittings aren't perfect right now. So when it drops down to about 17 or 18, it'll kick back in, maintaining the pressure. So, so say I've just, uh, my leak happens to be this sort of crap fitting right there. I'm going to have to get that dialed in, but I will later. So 
And then what happens with the pedal feel is it's like, you know, completely soft, right? It's what you'd expect with a full 20 inches of vacuum. It's just like, it's like, oh yeah, okay, I'm braking with very little effort. So I'll reduce it down now to 10 and we'll try it again. So I'm at 12. Just turn the screw a little bit. So we're now at 12. So let's have a look at that pedal pressure. Let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, that's it's still pretty easy going. It's not, uh, it's not massively soft and it's not uh, super firm, but uh, I don't like a 20. 20 feels ridiculously soft. Um, and I've got a stiff racing clutch, so I don't know if I want to have a super soft pedal. So that feels much better. Now I'll turn it down to five and we'll see how that feels. So here we are, sort of between four and a half and six. And uh, we'll see how that feels now. Yeah, much, much harder to push. So this is one of these things where you just sort of decide what you like and dial it in. And uh, anyway, nice little uh, concept, I think. Well, my two oldest boys are coming home for the holidays, so I've got to hang the door on there to get it out of the basement. And I think I'm going to put the dash in, finishing all the wiring over the holidays. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe a few other things. I'm probably going to build the air conditioning system and at least bench it. So, anyway, I've got to clean up and be a little less messy. It's slowing me down, but it's family, so it's worth it. So, I decided not to mount the uh, vacuum pump against uh, hanging it from the uh, cross brace. Just a little bit too kludgy. Instead, I built this little seamless bracket hanging it from the two holes that were on the um, rain tray wall that were originally used to hold the, um, I guess, the coil, the ignition coil. So I've got a nice little bracket there, and then there's uh, rubber isolators. So the other thing is, I'm just going to open this little box up here. So basically, I'm going to use uh, the computer to control the vacuum. I decided to change my mind rather than that pressure switch where you manually adjust the um, the, the amount of brake um, assist. So this is, you know, a one bar um, GM uh, vacuum sensor. You know, it's a, it's, they call it a MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure. And I've got one for the intake manifold, obviously. And I thought, geez, I'll just buy another one. And I'll use that to sense the vacuum in the pump and then I can turn the pump on and off under computer control and just I'll have a potentiometer that I can just turn up and down where I want the um, you know the brake softness how much sensitivity how much uh, assist I want on the servo so anyway nice and easy it costs about 70 bucks for that pump and about 65 bucks for the map sensor and if anybody's got an aftermarket computer system and ECU like the Holly they can they can do what I just did so kind of a cool idea so um, that's where we've ended up and um, I'll plumb all that in um, by the way so these are the three millimeter 100 by 4 um, spacers that I've used so I have lots of clearance now with the, uh, with the front discs and then these are the little um, placement pins so you screw them in before you put the wheel on and it allows me to hang the spacer on and then put the wheel in so that's all good now and um, the other thing I wanted to show you are these long acre racing products uh, toll plates so you place them let me zoom out okay so they would go when this when the car's in the ground these things would just like lie flat against the wheel and then there's those little notches, the, the shorter ones. You, there's two uh, um, tape measures that they also supply in the kit. It's like 60 bucks on Amazon. And you basically, you know, on each side of the car, you, 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 you um, put these things in with the um, 
tape measures and then you measure your toe. So the stock uh, rear axle had 1 8 inch toe in, which is what I want to keep it at. And I was measuring one degree of negative camber um, with my digital level that I just got. Another little $50 Amazon purchase, which is nice. And I've got, uh, so that's about 1.1, I think. And each of the rears and the fronts were like 1.2, um, which is fine for now. And then I've got 1 8 inch toe out. Um, and when I mount my Who's Your Racing Select, that's really important, supposedly. Uh, because uh, if you got any toe in or even you know toe neutral, the car will wander on the straights, uh, on the track or on the street. So anyway, um, so I've got the toe out set right on the front, toe in set right on the rear, and um, you know I think it's going to be straight. If I have to adjust it, I just you know turn the tie rod ends a little bit to um, get the steering wheel adjusted if it's not totally true. But I think we've got the steering dialed now. And with these long ears plates, it was very easy uh, to do that. So that's it.